Hello, this video, I'm going to discuss paper five, A level paper five, May June 2024, paper 51, question number two. Now, let me read the question first. A student investigates the sound from a horn attached to a car, as shown in Fig 2.1. A microphone is placed at the side of the road and connected to a frequency meter. The car travels towards the microphone. Frequency F of the sound detected by the microphone is read from the frequency meter. Speed of the car is measured by two speed detectors. Two measurements of speed are V1 and V2. Every speed V of the car is determined from V1 and V2. They have already mentioned that. Experiment is repeated for different speeds of the car. It is suggested that F and V are related by the equation F is equal to FSK over K minus V, where FS is the frequency of the sound emitted by the horn and K is a constant. A, a graph of 1 over F on the y-axis against V on the x-axis. Determine expressions for gradient and y-intercept. So you have to make sure that equation is given. You have to make sure that the y-axis is 1 over f. So I make 1 over f as my y-axis. So this whole thing here, I have to invert it. k minus v over fsk. Simplified it a bit. So this is k over fsk minus v over fsk. k and k. You know that for k and k, I just cancel that off. Now, simplified it, 1 over f is equal to 1 over fs um, minus v over fsk. I want you to see this. This is my y-axis. V is my x-axis. So we can actually compare with y equal to mx plus c. So the c is y-intercept is 1 over fs. And the gradient is negative 1 over fsk. So you have to be aware of the gradient. So that's it. And B, values of v1, v2, and f are given in table 2.1. So these are the value. Calculate and record the values of v, meter per second, and a 1 over f, slash 10 to the power negative 3 per hertz in table 2.1. Include the absolute uncertainty in V. So what I'm going to do now is to calculate 1 over F first. So 1 over F, since F value, 1 over F is calculated from F value, since F values have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 significant figures. Therefore, my 1 over F would take 4 significant figures. So you can check your values. This is 1.118. This is 1.110, this is 1.101, this is 1.092, or four significant figures, 1.083 and 1.074, done. V, since they asked me to include the absolute uncertainty, what I'm going to do is that I put plus minus in between first. I would like to calculate the absolute uncertainty of V first, right? So absolute uncertainty of V is calculated by, didn't give the absolute uncertainty of V. How do we calculate that? Very simple. Take the difference between V1 and V2. That means for the first value, you take 3.9 minus 3.1 divided by 2. And you end up getting 0 0.4. I am still going to use whatever I learned in AS, which the absolute uncertainty must be recorded as one significant figure. Second value, you take 6.7 minus 5.9 divided by 2. Put it in terms of one significant figure, so you should get 0.4. Third value, 9.2 minus 8.2 divided by 2, right? Put it in terms of one significant figure, you're supposed to get 0 0.5. Fourth value, 11.9 minus 10.9 divided by 2 and put it in terms of one significant figures, you are supposed to get 0 0.5. Fifth value, I take 14, I take a larger number, 14.5 minus 13.3 divided by two, put it in terms of one SF, you should get 0 0.6. And the last value, 16.8 minus 15.6 divided by two, put it in terms of one SF, you're supposed to get 0 0.6. 
you know why I calculate the absolute uncertainty of V values first? Because the reading of V must follow the decimal points of the absolute, its absolute uncertainty. Now, I can calculate the value of V. V, remember, the question already informed us that V is an average value of between V1 and V2. So you just take 3.1 plus 3.9 divided by 2, you should get 3.5. 1 SF, because my, my absolute uncertainty is of 1 decimal point. So 1 DP, not 1 SF, 1 DP. Second value, 6.7 plus 5.9 divided by 2, put it in terms of 1 DP, you get 6.3. Third, 9.2 plus 8.2 divided by 2, put it in terms of 1 dp, you should get 8.7. Fourth, 11.9 plus 10.9 divided by 2, put it in terms of 1 dp, you're supposed to get 11.4. Fifth, 13.3 plus 14.5 divided by 2, put it in terms of 1 dp, you're supposed to get 13.9. Last value, 15.6 plus 16.8 divided by 2, put it in terms of 1 dp, you are supposed to get 16.2. We are done with table. D part 1, plot a graph of 1 over f slash 10 to the power negative 3 per hertz against v, ms negative 1, include the error bars for v. And the second part, I... I do this right away. Draw the straight line of best fit and worst acceptable straight line on your graph. Label both lines, right? So this is it, yeah? This is, I label my best fit, right? I make sure that the best fit line, yeah, is close to most of my points. Yeah, not far deviated from all my points plotted. And then the worst fit line, yeah, this is the horizontal error bar, remember, because V is of absolute uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty is on V. V is on your x-axis. Therefore, the error bar must be horizontal error bar. So how to draw the worst fit line? If you start from the head, uh, the front of the first error bar, you have to end at the tail of the last error bar. You have to make sure that this worst fit line crosses all the error bars in between. Or if you start from the tail of the first error bar, you have to end at the head of the first error bar. Make sure that this error, uh, this word speed line crosses all the error bars in between, right? Now, since the question asks us to determine the gradient of best fit, include the absolute uncertainty in your answer. So I put M best is the best fit gradient the, because the symbol of gradient is M, right? So I got two values, Y2, 1.125. Remember, Y axis is with a power. So don't Forget about your power, 10 to the power negative 3 minus 1.073 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by x2 minus x1, 3 minus 16.6. And my best fit gradient, I get negative 3.8235 times 10 to the power negative 6. Doesn't matter how many significant figures I put here because that's not my final answer. Now, I find the gradient of worst fit. You just look at your worst fit line, find the gradient of it, get two points from it. So I get 1.117 times 10 to the power negative 3 minus 1.0735 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by 3.2 minus 17. I got negative 3.1522 times 10 to the power negative 6. Now, how do you include your absolute uncertainty for gradient? Delta gradient is equal to, you take a larger value, negative 3.1522 times 10 to the power negative 6 minus negative 3.8235 times 10 to the power negative 6. And I got, you take the difference between the two gradients values, right? Best fit gradient and worst fit gradient. And I got 0 0.7. Put it in terms of one significant figure. I am still using the concept from AS. Absolute uncertainty must take one significant figure, 10 to the power negative 6. So when I write my gradient, I put a bracket because I want to put the power, 10 to the power negative 6 at the back. Put plus minus in between. Make sure that you fill in the gradient value first. And the reading of the gradient must follow the decimal points of the absolute uncertainty. So negative 3.8 is the answer.
Now, the next one. Determine the y-intercept of the line of best fit. Include the absolute uncertainty in your answer. Now, look at the y-axis. Y-axis doesn't start from zero. Therefore, you cannot read off from the graph. You cannot take your y-axis from the graph. Right? What to do? We can do this. You have to use substitution method to solve this. I am going to find, okay, for my best fit first. For my best fit, I get y equal to mx plus c best. Right? The two coordinates that I take from my best fit is negative 3.8. Uh, no, sorry. The two coordinate that I took from my best fit was 3.2 and 1.125 times 10 to the power negative 3. Sub into the equation, 1.125 times 10 to the power negative 3 is equal to my best fit gradient and best, yeah? Negative 3.8235. I take more significant figures because I want my answer to be more accurate. Times uh, 3.2 plus best fit. Yeah, y-intercept of best fit. So y-intercept of best fit, I got 1.137 times 10 to the power negative 3. For worst fit, on the other hand, worst fit, I'm using the same thing. Y equal to M worst X plus C worst. The two coordinates that I took from my worst fit was 17 and 1.0735 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now, sub in the value, I use different colors so that you can see that they are different. 1.0735 times 10 to power 3. Gradient of worst fit was negative 3.1522 times 10 to power negative 6. And x value is 17 plus worst fit intercept. So the worst fit intercept was 1.127 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now, Delta C, you take a larger value, 1.137 times 10 to the power negative 3 minus 1.127 times 10 to the power negative 3 and put it in terms of one significant figure. Now I got 0 0.001 times 10 to the power negative 3. Quite small. Now put a bracket. 10 to the power negative 3, put plus minus 0 0.001. So I need to make sure that my y-intercept is written in terms of 3 dp. So it is 1.137. D, using your answers to A, C3, and C4, determine the value of Fs and K. Include appropriate units. I know that 1 over Fs, you remember, that is your, let us scroll up a bit, y in the set. So I get the y in the set value first which is y intercept. Since they didn't ask us to include the absolute uncertainty for fs or k, you can use your best fit value. Always use your best fit value. 1 over fs is equal to 1.137 times 10 to the power negative 3. fs is equal to 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power negative uh, 2, to the power of 2 hertz. That is the unit. Frequency, right? So 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 2 hertz. That's the answer. And negative 1 over Fsk, that is your gradient. Remember? Now, negative 1 over Fsk is equal to best fit gradient, negative 3.8235 times 10 to the power negative 6. Cancel off the negative value and sub in the value of Fs. 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power 2k and equals to 3.8235 times 10 to the power negative 6. Therefore, k value is 2.97 times 10 to the power 2 meter per second. 2.97 times 10 to the power 2 meter per second. Now, how do I get meter per second? First, gradient is y in y axis divided by x axis. Gradient, your y-axis is per hertz. Your x-axis is meter per second. So I'm going to do that, okay? So 1 over, okay, this is the k value. Yeah, um, Fs is in hertz. And then k, I need to find the unit of k. This is per hertz. Yeah. 
over ms negative one hertz and hertz you cancel hertz and hertz negative one because they multiply so they cancel off each other so you left behind meter per second now, determine the percentage uncertainty in K. Wow. Now, to determine the percentage uncertainty in K, I use the K value from 1 over FSK, which is equal to gradient, right? Now, K is actually equal to 1 over FS times gradient. So this is about multiplication and division. Right, so here I got my best fit FS, right? The best FS value. I, from here, I also want to find my worst fit FS. Worst fit, right? One over FS is equal to worst uh, Y intercept, 1.127. 1 1.127 times 10 to the power negative three. So the FS worst, I got uh, 8.872 times 10 to the power of negative, uh, times 10 to the power of 2, sorry. This is 10 to the power of negative 3. This is 10 to the power of 2. Now, delta Fs from here, I take the larger value minus the smaller value, and I got 0 0.082. Hertz. K value, since it is about division and multiplication, I find delta K over K times 100%. The whole thing represents the percentage uncertainty in K, which is equal to delta FS over FS times 100%, plus delta gradient over gradient times 100%. So the gradient value I have already found my absolute uncertainty, so I can just sub in the value, grade, uh, value of gradient. Right, so this is 0 0.082 divided by 8.8. .8. Don't bother about the power times 100% plus 0 0.7 divided by 3.8 times 100%. Therefore, I got 19%. Power you can just ignore because both absolute and uh, absolute uncertainty and the value, the reading itself, share the same power. Now, part E, the last part, the experiment is repeated determine the speed v that gives a value of f of 987.8 hertz now when the last part is usually using back the equation that has been given so f copy back copy back from where copy back from the question which is this f equal to fsk divided by k minus v we are going to use that f equals fsk divided by k minus v so i make okay i cross multiply i get this fsk i make v as the subject k minus v is equal to fsk over f now um v is equal to k minus fsk over f V is equal to K value is 2.97. We determined it earlier, remember? Minus Fs, which is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 2. V value, uh, no, K value, 2.97 times 10 to the power of 2. Divided by F value, which is given 987.8. Working out, you should get 32.4 meter per second. 32 or 32.4 meter per second is the answer. Now, I hope you gain benefit from it. Thanks thanks a lot for watching. If you face any difficulties, any questions that you want to ask, please do comment below. And thanks again. Bye.